Hello, welcome to the Psychodynamic Psychotherapy Explanation to a CPN Station. And the example that you saw there in the video was uh, a question which was based on a, a similar scenario which had come up in the CASC exam where you're faced with a, with a CPN or, or K coordinator who's having difficulty managing a, um, a client of his and is requesting that you take on the role of care coordination despite you also seeing the, the patient for uh, psychodynamic psychotherapy. And so tests a number of different uh, uh, skills really in terms of eliciting information, eliciting concerns uh, and then providing an explanation to, uh, to a CPN and then also looking at offering potential uh, solutions. Uh, and in terms of how um, psychodynamic psychotherapy gets tested in, in, in the CASC, uh, from what I'm aware of, um, other stations that, that um, have been known to come up have been assessments on uh, suitability for psychodynamic psychotherapy and presenting, uh, presenting this to, to a consultant. Uh, and so if you um, have a look um, on this module, you'll see uh, a, a video and tutorial on that as well. Two other psychodynamic related stations have also come up in the CAS and I haven't yet done videos on that but we'll be, uh, we'll be uploading them. Uh, and they're based on eliciting defence mechanisms uh, from, a, from, a, from a patient uh, such as denial, projection uh, dis and displacement uh, and also uh, you, uh, you uh, seeing a patient who wants to discontinue uh, having psychodynamic psychotherapy with their therapist uh, and your role is to, is to look at um, the reasons for that and, and also attempt to, to see um, and get the patient to reflect on um, why that is and how that could um, reflect on how they uh, are dealing with other things in their, in their life. Uh, so do be sure to, to look, look those up and um, and practice those as well, uh, but I will be uh, uploading those um, in due course. So uh, let's just move on and talk about how this particular uh, interview was structured. So as you saw on the video, after I introduced myself and set the scene, uh, we went on to looking at what the, the concerns had been uh, with the care coordinator. Uh, and as, as you've noted on the video, uh, and this uh, applies to all of the scenarios that you that you do um, face when you're in the CASC exam is to always demonstrate empathy, demonstrate and demonstrate appropriate listening skills, and you know look like you care about what the the person is saying. And you, I mean, you'll be surprised with um, that, you know when, when you when you do examine other, other other candidates or when you when you when you do see other um, doctors. In, in, in these situations, they can look disinterested, or they can appear argumentative when they're when they're faced with with, with patients, relatives, and a care coordinator. So, although it sounds an obvious uh, an obvious thing that I'm saying, you know, do demonstrate that you are interested in and and um, involved in what the the actor is saying. Uh, and then, moving on to the concerns and so obviously what we need to do is really find out what's happening um, and so using open questions is obviously key here um, and then uh, and then one of the first things that um, I'd like to know if I was in a situation like this is do we actually need to revisit the, the risk management plan for this particular patient is there an increased risk here does this patient need to come in um, does he need more further monitoring from our service or is, is the current risk management plan uh, sound? Uh, and that's something that we'd, we'd identified that, uh, that the CPN had said that, you know, that there didn't really need to be, uh, be any changes to the management plan um, and it was containing him at the moment. Uh, and so, and then what I wanted to do there was then just to, just to confirm that the, the, the key outcome he wanted was to see whether uh, the, the, the doctor or I in this particular video could take on the role of care coordination for him. And then we moved on to the, uh, the, the, the 
explanation for that and obviously the first thing that we would need to do is really to explain what psychodynamic psychotherapy is and as with any other explanation uh, or information giving stations in, in the cask you need to look at uh, what their understanding of the, of the, uh, the, the, the subject is uh, and then you can tell your explanation uh, to, to them. So, so in terms of uh, psychodynamic psychotherapy, so, you know, could, you t could you tell me, you know, have you ever heard of that before? And then, as, a, as you saw in the video, the key things to emphasise are that it's the, uh, it's the you know, it's an evidence-based treatment for uh, patients who suffer with a, a borderline personality disorder. And then an ex a brief explanation of the, of the, the pragmatics of it, the method that we, we, it's a pre-arranged time uh, in the same place. Uh, it, um, every week. Each of the sessions lasts uh, between four to five minutes to an hour, uh, and the, the purpose of this treatment is, is, to, is to allow the patient uh, to talk about difficult and potentially traumatic issues uh, in, their, in their upbringing, uh, to, to discover how these uh, may have led to inappropriate coping skills in the present day, such as self-harming, uh, and that the key, key Things that make this type of therapy successful uh, are that the, um, the therapist is boundaried uh, and non judgmental. Um, and so the patient can, can reflect uh, comfortably in, in, in that environment. Uh, and that if you're also acting as care coordinator, then that will obviously skew the boundaries and contaminate this, this therapeutic environment. So, and that's what we that's when we uh, move on to in terms of offering reasons for, for refusal. So we um, so we mentioned uh, the fact that we can't care coordinate because it can skew these boundaries. The other key thing to mention is that, is that um, as you know, when when uh, patients who undergo psychodynamic psychotherapy um, in the first uh, in the early stages can find it quite difficult to deal with with some of the emotions that start to surface uh, and so they they start to act out uh, which is which is normal and that that um, needs to be that information needs to be relayed to the care coordinator that this is a normal part of the the, the, the healing process really so um, so that would be the the, the, the two the, the key reasons for re, uh, for offering reasons for refusal but then the, the important point at that point um, is to then go on to looking at potential solutions to offer to the CPM to deal with the, the current situation. And um, that's a very important um, uh, aspect of this particular station, which uh, some candidates have neglected um, and therefore not done well on this station. And that's, it's not just to say, well, you know, I can't, I can't offer, I can't be his care coordinator, I'm sorry. Uh, thank you and goodbye. We, you, you don't want to be ending the station like that. You want to be demonstrating that you, you, you're wanting to help the members of your team. And so offering a professionals meeting, looking at potentially switching care coordinators or, or sharing the care coordination with another member of the team. Um, uh, and also, I mean, it's something I didn't do in the video, but emphasise the, the, the important role that, that the care coordinator has uh, in the management of this of this case, um, which is which is which is an important thing to do because it it, it is obviously difficult. So um, encouragement and support are always um, very well received, very important and, and obviously well received. Um, other other things that came out in, in the video is the, the the CPN said at one stage, oh, well, you, you don't know the half of it, uh, and so you know I, I would take that as a as a verbal cue to say, well. You is there anything else that you'd like to add, or is there anything else that we've missed? Um, so I hope that's a, a useful, uh, again, a useful grounding from which to practice this particular station. Uh, and let's just go through the script for this particular station before we before we finish. So, hello, Simon. My name is Dr. X, and as you know, I'm one of the psychiatrists that work here in the team. I understand that you've been having concerns with one of our patients, Mark. Could you share with me what those main concerns are? So starting off with the open question, empathic statements such as, you know, Simon, I, I see that 
So it's obviously been very difficult for you. Um, or other additional empathic statements could be, yes, you know, I appreciate you have a large number of patients on your caseload at the moment. The key thing at the beginning is if the, the, the social worker or the, the care coordinator uh, says, you know, can I, can I just discharge him to you? Uh, you know, I, I, I'm not going um, to give an, uh, a definite yes or a, a definite no um, at the beginning. I'll just say, uh, well, would it be okay if we had a chat about it first and then, and then come to a decision about it at the end? Uh, is, is always a, is, is a line I like to use that it maintains rapport and then um, allows you to complete the task. So, moving on. Could you take, talk me through the last time you spoke to him? Uh, what's he doing differently? Um, as, as we've said before, what we're, what we're looking at here is, is just really exploring his current behaviour to see if there needs to be a change in his risk management. So do you think this, his recent behaviour has changed to the extent that we would need to revisit his risk management plan? And then we move on to the, the, uh, the key part of the task is to, is to explain the, um, the, the treatment of psychodynamic psychotherapy and then offer reasons as to why it would be inappropriate for, for us to care, take on the role of care coordination. So, as, as I've said, with every other information giving station, you want to understand what their knowledge of the topic is and then tell your explanation uh, to that. So, at the moment, I'm treating Mark with a type of talking therapy called psychodynamic psychotherapy. Have you heard about that? Psychodynamic psychotherapy is a type of talking therapy where Mark discusses difficult and possibly traumatic issues about his personal life which can then allow him to discover how these have led to inappropriate coping skills. For example, harming himself. Does that make sense? Uh, you, you could add there. And then, in order for the treatment to work, the therapeutic environment has to be non-judgmental, have clear boundaries to be emotionally containing for him. Does that make sense? And the other sentence to also uh, to also include um, is also an explanation just of the actual method of, of what happens so that um, in, with this type of talking therapy we meet at a set time in a set place uh, and each session lasts up to an hour uh, and these are done on a weekly basis uh, and in cases such as this uh, we may need it up to at least 10 months to for the treatment to, to show some uh, to, sh to show some effect. So, and I, I think I think the the key thing, obviously, when you're explaining talking therapies, is to have uh, just have some set uh, learned generic lines for for uh, for the, the various types of talking therapy. So that when when you're faced with a station like that, uh, you you'll be able to just to, you'll be able to deliver the information. Confidently, uh, a good source uh, of information is obviously the, the Royal College leaflets around the talking therapies, uh, from which you can then construct your, your generic answers around uh, for the exam. And then moving on, these are obviously just some some sentences where we're offering our reasons for refusal. So. So if the therapist is also involved in, in care coordination, then this safe therapeutic environment will no longer exist, rendering his, his therapy ineffective. Does that make sense? And as you know, he's, he's got this diagnosis of uh, borderline personality disorder, and this type of talking therapy is, is the evidence-based treatment for it. And as this is the only form of treatment available for Mark at the moment, I'd have to decline being his care coordinator for those reasons. And then the issues around acting out. So, psychodynamic psychotherapy, especially in its early stages, can bring many stressful emotions to the surface. And patients can subsequently act out on these emotions, e.g., by self-harming. And and uh, and obviously, I mean, a, a good thing to do is tailor the the the, um, the behaviours which the patient is displaying into your into your sentences. So if he's self-harming or overdosing, for example. 
The benefits may not be immediately apparent and they can get worse before they get better as they learn to develop better coping strategies. Does that make sense? And then moving on to the final part of, of the interview where we're looking at offering uh, potential solutions to the care coordinator. So uh, again, an empathic statement uh, demonstrating the fact that you're aware that you know, this, is, this isn't a nice situation to be in where you're having to, to manage uh, a borderline patient uh, who's, who's demanding a, a time with a, it, and when you've already got a difficult caseload uh, to manage. So simple sentences such as, Simon, I really do appreciate that you have a large caseload. Um, and then, and you, but you really do have an extremely important role to play in Mark's recovery. So uh, an emphasis there. Could we discuss this in the team to see if there's an alternative way in which we could be, he could be managed? For example, we could look at changing the care coordinator or, or, or sharing your caseload, which I think is, is the, the best way forward really in a situation like this, is to look, discuss it in a team meeting uh, and, and try to brainstorm, brainstorm potential solutions. So I hope this particular tutorial has, has been useful for you. Um, good luck with it and I will see you in the next tutorial.